Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show how to use the Azure ML designer to build out your machine learning pipelines. So I'm here in my Azure ML instance here. And for the designer, just click on the designer. And there are some samples here that you can look at, some regression, binary classification, even image classification samples that you can use within the designer here. But I'll start from scratch. We need to select a compute to use. So I'll use one that I already have. If you remember a while back, they had an Azure ML Studio, which was pretty much similar to this, where you can drag and drop and create your pipelines to a designer like this. The one here in Azure ML is a bit updated and they've added a good bit more assets that you can use. So speaking of assets, let's go through what we have available to us. First are uh, data sets. You know, you can upload your own data sets and it gets it from the data store that you have associated to this Azure ML instance. And there's some sample data sets to help get you started, to help you learn how to use the designer here. Adult census income, uh, automobile price, uh, some churn data, IMDB movie titles and ratings, Wikipedia data set, some images here, restaurant data set. So a good selection of data sets to help you get started. Then we have some data input and output here. So mainly you can enter your data manually. If you just want to play around with some of your own data, you can just enter it manually. You can import and export data. You can import from Azure SQL or blob storage. You can export to those as well. Some data transformations, add columns and rows, apply some math and SQL operations. Uh, one you'll probably use often is clean missing data. Convert to CSV or data sets. Uh, edit metadata, that's going to be a one you'll probably be using. Uh, join or normalize data sets. Remove duplicate rows. Split data, we'll be using that pretty often. We'll actually use that in our pipeline today. Feature selection, uh, use permutation feature importance. So you can use get that to get feature importance on your models. You can summarize data. You got several machine learning algorithms we can use. We have several from regression, clustering, and classification. Model training, where we actually train our model, but we also tune model hyperparameters, train a clustering model, and even train a PyTorch model. Model scoring, we can apply different transformations, assign data to clusters, cross-validate on our model, a score image model, a score regular model, and then evaluate on that model. So we can create a Python model using the custom script, but we also execute a Python script. And we can also execute an R script as well. We have some assets for text analytics. So uh, extract engrams, pre-process the text. Here's some items for computer vision. So apply image transformation, a splint image directory for training and testing. Some items for recommendation, where we can train some recommenders and then evaluate and score on that. Anomaly detection for a time series data. We can train anomaly detection model. And then some web services where we can have inputs and outputs as part of our pipeline. That's a little bit of what you can do here in our designer here. So let's uh, create a simple one. We can have our own data sets and we can add that in the data sets navigation item here. We create a data set from a local file. And I'll be using the Iris data set, kind of like one of the hello world data sets that you use in machine learning. And I'll use my same data store. And I have the iris.data file here. And we can preview our, our items. Now we don't have any columns and I kind of wish that you can adjust the column names in here, but we can't. And there's a way we can do that within the pipeline that I'll be showing you. So we'll click next, that looks good. We can tell it to not include some columns, but we need all of these, so I'll include that and then create more data set. So that got included. Let's go back to the designer and to our one that auto saved for us. Reselect our compute. Even though we have our iris data set, we just drag and drop that onto the palette here. All right, so remember what I said about changing these column names. In fact, we can right click and visualize our data set output. So we have kind of a sample of our data here and our column names, and then we click on it, we get some information about it. Mean, median, min, max, standard deviation, 
any missing values, unique values, what feature type it thinks it is, it's numeric. And then we have a, like a histogram of all the values in here. And if we go to our categorical, since it's categorical, it doesn't give us any statistical summary on it. It says it's a string feature. So back to that changing of the column names. So in order to do that, we'll use that edit metadata asset here. We'll drag and drop that over and we need to connect these in here. And in here, it tells us what columns we need to use. So what columns we want to use as this edit metadata input. And I just click all of these columns. I can just click all columns here instead of doing that one by one. So all columns, data type, and categorical fields, I leave that as unchanged, but I put some new column names here. First one is the sepal length, then sepal width, then petal length, then petal width, and then the label column, I just call class. Okay, and let's run this. So submit, we'll select an experiment. I will go ahead and select a new experiment. So we'll just say iris. And submit and this will submit this pipeline uh, to run and this will probably take a few minutes for it to run all right so this finished now we can look at our output here visualize results data now we can see our column names did change like we like we expected all right so next what we can do is let's go back to our data set results here and go back to this class here it still says it's a string feature but this is actually a categorical class because we see we have all these items here we got two items here and there's actually a third one in here it doesn't display all the data so what we can do is do another edit metadata okay. and in here we just want our we just want our class and notice we get our new column names instead of the original ones let's save and now our categorical change it to a categorical column and we'll go ahead and say a new column. So it'll be class categorical. And that's it for the metadata. Next, we can go ahead and split our data. We can do that. And I like to do a 20% as my test data. So I do 80% here as the first output as the data set, which I'll be using as my training data. Then I'll do a randomized split. I'll keep the seed as zero. The stratified split, this helps with unbalanced data, give you a bit more balanced data in your split. And it's actually a good idea to do this uh, regardless. So I do true, and then I'll set my stratification key as my class. We'll hit save. Now let's run this and see how this works. I'll use my same experiment. Now the first run did take a while, but if you look here, we have this little recycle icon. This run reused the same output as the previous run, any subsequent runs after the first one will be a lot quicker. All right, so that ran, but this last split data actually failed. And y'all might be able to guess why, but let's look at it. With error and call name or in this class not found. And that's because we hadn't run this step yet, which changes the class column name to class categorical. So to fix this, we just go back here to our column name that we'll use as our input and change it to class categorical. So now that we split our data here, we can actually train a model. So we use the train model asset. There we go. So this takes two inputs and this split data receives two outputs. So what we can do here is we take our first one, which is going to be that train data set so we put it here on our data set item within our train model it's smart enough to know that we don't put it in this first one so we put it in the second one what kind of algorithm do we want to train this model on so let's go back to our machine learning algorithms and this is a classification item it's a multi-class classification so let's try this first one with the class boosted decision tree. And we put this to that first node in the train model asset. So we have that. Now we need to score the model. It goes into the first one. And then we use our test data set into 
our second node of our score model. Then once we score it, we need to evaluate on it. So we just evaluate model node and we put that one in there. All right, so that is our pipeline. Let's run this invalid parameter. Uh, we need to tell it what the label column is in our train model. So it's a class categorical. There we go, I should have known for that little warning sign there. Now we can submit this. All right, so this got completed and we can go to our evaluate method, right click. We can visualize evaluation results. There we go, we have our overall accuracy, we have precision and recall here, all pretty pretty high, so looks like we have a pretty decent model here. All right, so that's kind of a bit of an introduction to the Azure ML Designer. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.